Hey everybody, it is Professor Parrish and we are on week six of English 109. So uh, I'm recording this as actually week five is still going on. So please make sure that you have your grammar review, your discussion forum, and the second writing assignment completed. Again, just to reiterate, you can revise your papers if you turn in a draft for your writing assignment. So make sure that you get that writing assignment number two turned in if you haven't already. That way you can get uh, those points and chance to revise if needed. But we're going to talk about week six. So we're nearing the end of the semester. We only have three weeks left after this one. So it's rounding out. We've got about a month left of class. And so I wanted to go ahead and talk about what's going to be due uh, for this week. So going to our weekly overview, uh, let me get back on this for week six. Um, all the assignments are going to be due on the 20th by 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. So we've got this video that you're watching now. Um, the only thing to read in our English textbook is chapter 8, which is about narration. And so we'll be talking about that and the outline and thesis for it. But narration is, I think narration for students is the easiest paper to write in this class because it is the one that students are most familiar with. It's talking about your own experience. You don't have to do any research for it. It's a pretty standard paper. And, I, and by this point in the semester, everybody's gearing up for finals, we're going up for Thanksgiving, for holiday, if you're going home to see family or friends. So I try to make this paper a little bit lighter so that you can have it done quicker in time to travel. So that's kind of the reasoning behind it by doing it so by so late in the semester. But we've got uh, your discussion forum number six, which we'll go over here in a second. We got your thesis outline for paper number three and then your textbook activity number four. So there's three assignments this week. So it shouldn't be anything crazy, but let's go ahead and talk about that discussion forum. So um, in our in this video, which I've put a link to it here, it's talking about narration. And I will go ahead and say this, the I like this video a lot, it's pretty fun, but the voice of the narrator, coincidentally enough, has a pretty thick British accent. So you may have to like listen closely or you may have to watch the video twice. It's not long though, it's only like six or seven minutes. So it's not a long video and you can pause it and rewatch parts if it didn't, if you couldn't understand it correctly, you can put subtitles on it. Um, but they do have a very thick British accent. I had, to, I had to watch it twice to fully get it. But they're talking about narration and how it's used in various films, which films are really just scripts. So it's a form of writing as well. Just one that's been acted out onto a camera. And so after watching this video, um, I do have three questions I would like for you to ask. First, based on the video and chapter eight, what is the importance of a narrator in a narrative piece of writing? Two, Robert Downey Jr.'s character Harry is a narrator in the film Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which is a pretty good movie. If you've not watched Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, I would recommend it. It's fun. Um, as discussed in the video, how is he different than typical narrators? And then how could you use narration or a narrator in your own writing assignments? So I think that's pretty important as we go into the paper about narration. How would you plan on using a narrator or a voice of perspective in your actual paper? So you've got that discussion forum, uh, your posts, and then three responses. Uh, so far, everybody's responses have been pretty good. Um, if you've been wondering why I've taken off points from your discussion posts, it's probably either for grammatical reasons, um, but everybody's grammar, grammar has been pretty good. It's mainly been because some of the responses, like I said in week one, um, just a one sentence response isn't enough because these posts are, due so, are worth so many points. So I may start getting a little bit more critical on those. Some of you that are just writing one sentence responses, that needs to be a a little bit more detailed. Um, they're worth 50 points for this assignment, which is pretty heavy. So if I just see one sentence responses, I may start taking five or six points off instead of the two that I've been taking off. So just be aware of that, that you need to make sure you're only responding to three people for the week. So make sure you have at least two to three sentence responses per, per post, because I think that would be substantial enough. So just make sure you're doing that. And then the textbook activity is pretty simple this week. Pretty simple. So uh, for this, I have, you know, for number one through four, it's a non-activity in chapter six. Describe the four bases of writing in chapter six and define them. So chapter six talks about bases of writing. What are they? And you define them. And then which of the four bases do you think is the most important? So there's not really that question that's like, which of the four do you think is most important? Is There's no wrong answer. You just have to give me which one you think it is and why. And then activity 12 is on page 177 to 179. And so you're going to read each passage and choose the, the best, the option that best describes the base that the passage does not 
effectively apply. So of those four bases that you identify from chapter six, which is not applied the best in each passage. So it's a pretty straightforward, quick activity, but I want to do it with you all to identify if you can, one, know what the basis of writing are, because it's going to be on your final exam. You should know it. And then two, being able to identify them within writing. So otherwise it should be a pretty straightforward assignment. And then finally, we have our writing assignment, which is your thesis and outline. So far, everybody's thesis and outline for the most part have been very, very good because you're just saying your topic and you're just giving me an outline of the points you're going to touch base on. So if I click on the guidelines for writing assignment number three, basically we're doing narration. So this can be a story that is about yourself. It can be about a friend or family member. It can be about a community. Um, when the May 8th storm came through here in Southern Illinois, I had several students the following semester write about the experience of people in their community during that time. That is totally acceptable. I've had people write about themselves and experiences they've had, whether it's been anything from broken bones to childbirth to a family vacation gone wrong to a sports team like winning the state championship. I've seen all kinds of stories. And I think this paper is a lot of fun because you get to write about something that you're not only familiar with, but that you find engaging and that would make a good paper. So the assignment needs to be three full pages, double spaced. It can be longer if you choose so, but your points for this paper are going to be based on your introduction and conclusion, the content, the grammar, and the page length and formatting. You don't need any work cited for this because it's all from experience. So that's kind of the bonus, right? And then your outline, your writing prep should look something like this. It should have your introduction. Your thesis should go right here, and then you'll tell me the points that you're talking about. And if you have any sub points, you can list them as well. I usually put work in progress here for conclusion because most people, you don't know how your paper is going to end. But if you do, you can write some, some brief notes here if you want. That's totally up to you. But, um, but I just want like a brief skeletal framework of how you're going to write your paper just so you have it to go off of as well. All right. And that's pretty much it. So. I am really excited about narration papers. I find them very interesting because they kind of speak to you, the student, and what you're interested in talking about. So, but that is week six. And you can go ahead, before we end this video, I want to go ahead and show you Thanksgiving week because I know people travel, they go see family and friends. So I just want to give you guys a heads up about what will open up. This will open up November 13th. It will unlock at 12 a.m. for you to go ahead and start if you want to on your Thanksgiving assignments. So um, the week seven overview, basically you have two assignments for that week for Thanksgiving. You have a writing assignment three, which is your narration paper and a grammar review. I'll talk about them in next week's video, but they're not going to be hard. <laughs> so basically it's going to be you turning in your narration paper and doing a very quick, simple grammar review. And I, I hate to assign things over Thanksgiving break. I hate to do that, but it was either, it was either give you four assignments this week or give you four assignments the following week. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I, I did it one week and I was dreading it. So I would rather give you these two short assignments, get them done before you travel or do them like the weekend after Thanksgiving when you're in a food coma. <laughs> and then that way you will already have them done. But that way you didn't have to be overloaded this weekend or the weekend after Thanksgiving because the weekend after Thanksgiving is the weekend before finals week. So I didn't want to overload you for that either. So there are two assignments for Thanksgiving week, but if you want to go ahead and do them, you are welcome to. So um, just make sure that you do your thesis. I would say before turning in your narrative paper, make sure that I've read your outline and thesis for paper three, because I've had students in the past that did this assignment and then immediately turned in their narration paper. And for some reason, their topic and outline didn't work and they had to go back and redo it. So just to be safe, make sure you can go ahead and do the grammar review. Sure. But if you want to wait until after I've approved your thesis and outline and then turn in the third paper, I would do that. All right. But as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll be back very soon with week seven, Thanksgiving week for English 109.